Hello, welcome to the Touch Starve demo. Uh, so yesterday, I yesterday uh, a trailer was in my uh, in my YouTube feed, and I found found the demo demo to this game. And I thought it was I thought it looked so cool. The designs of the characters looked looked really interesting. The town and all that. So let's see if we can get into this. Damn! Listen to that. I really hope that I can have, have like the volume like at a good level. Yeah, it might be good. I'm very sorry if I don't. Holy shit! I'm like I'm like a few seconds in. I'm already loving the music. All right, let's see what we got here. Demo product. This is a demo of Touchstar Prologue and not the finished product. Thank you. Okay. Touch Starve is intended for an older audience. It contains mature content that includes, but not limited to, horror, graphic violence, strong language, alcohol and drug reference, injury and dismemberment. Player discretion advice. You hear that? Any kids watching this? Click off. For your own sanity. Alright. If you accept the, emb if you ex accept the embargo terms and and content warning, please click to proceed. In Touch Dive, your choices matter. The decisions you make may result in unique dialogue, interactions, or even choices in red text, which contain exclusive content. Ooh! Try playing through the demo more than once and choosing different options. You might even uncover a secret ending. And remember, there are no wrong choices, only interesting ones. Choose wisely and save often. Ooh. Okay. Right, enter my name. Pronouns. Hmm. This world began to unravel long before you were born. Began with fog fall. Spectral mist bled from the seams where reality warms it thin to split. Oh, sorry. Sp began spectral mist bled from the seams where reality war so thin it split. And from the fog emerged monsters. Inhuman beings with unnatural powers. Some possessed language and intellect. Others were mindless beasts driven by little more than the desire to slaughter. As cities fell and unrest spread, humans united in their, when, in their fear while monsters thrived in the chaos. And then there's you. You're not even sure if you're human. You were born cursed with hands that alter minds of anyone you touch. Choose your backstory. Woo! The unnamed, you were raised as an oracle in a remote temple. The priest claimed your touch bestowed a light enlightenment. A, vis a visiting mage revealed the curse for what it is. Following the mage's word, you fled in search of the Senbon Senobium. Sorry. You regularly experienced unnatural premonitions that rattled your body and soul. An innate sixth sense gives you a heightened awareness of hidden supernatural presences around you. The Hound. You were raised by society's outcast criminals who accept you when nobody else would. Your partner in crime, a friend since childhood, helped you steal enough money for a cure, then betrayed you. They left you with only enough coin to travel to the Cenobium, your last hope. You have sharply, sharply honed social intuition. Can survive and even thrive in the violent underbelly of any city, using your experience for the underworld to get ahead. I like this one. This one sounds pretty pretty cool. An exiled Cenobian mage took you in as a child, raising you as her apprentice. She seems to take pity on your curse, but you discovered that she was cultivating you as a test subject. You fled to the Cenobium, seeking a cure. Your experienced spellcaster with an encyclopedic knowledge of alchemy, spellcraft, and history, with a little observed 
observation, you can identify the subtle effects of magic. All these sound like really good, really good. Good, good to start with. Mm. I am very sorry, my words, sometimes... Hang on. It's, re it's really weird, like, when it comes to writing, I can paint a pretty de decent picture with my words. But when it comes to talking, it's like my brain and the and mouth are went through a nasty divorce and want nothing to do with each other. Hmm. -mm. I think I'm going to start with the Forsaken Thief. Her name is Kiro. Select the she, her pronouns. Your backstory is the hound. Is this correct? Hell yeah, let's do this. Oh. The wasteland stretches as far as the eye can see. There's nothing out here but death. The ever-present stench of decay. And countless sun-bleached sun -bleached bones cast like seeds across the bare land. I could say death doesn't scare me, but to tell the truth, I'm desperate. It's been two weeks since I joined a, a caravan bound across the waste. Finding a group that would accept me was a trial in, in itself. As rations grew sparse and my canteen, canteen ran dry, I began to despair. But then I saw it. Oh, Iridia, the city of knowledge. One of the last bastions of humanity left in the world, and home to the famous academy called the Cenobium. All the world's knowledge gathered in one place. Just anywhere I'll find a cure for my curse. It's there. Oh. Oh, oh shit. Hang on. What happened? Okay, I didn't skip anything. I'm sorry about that. All that stands between me and the cure is the final stretch of salt soaked waste. So I think, until I see see the thirst fur, first tendrils of fog sneaking beneath the wagon. Is this fog fall? My stomach sinks. My stomach stinks at the very whisper of it. A silent storm, more devastating than fire. Dangerous in cities, but a death sentence beyond them. A thick blanket of fog engulfs us, smothering out our lantern's light. The wa wagon lurches to a stop. In the eerie silence, heavy... <sighs> okay, I remember to take breaths every now and then. An eerie silence, heavy as a mist, falls over us. The only warning we get is a strangled scream. S Stay back! No! A cry dissolves into wet gurgling. Then, the wagon violently pitches to, its, to the side. I hit the ground hard. The air punched from my lungs. I open my eyes. Adrenaline lends sudden... Then sudden, awful clarity to the carnage around me. A traitor I once shared bread with lies face down in the mud, their back reduced to long strands of torn muscle, gleaming crystal and exposed bone. Bodies slither the wasteland. I try to rise, but my ankle explodes with pain so blinding, white blooms across my vision. Only when my eyes adjust do I see the dark shape in front of me. Oh, and how do I? Okay, that's how I. Damn. A soulless stoops over the twisted form of a caravaner. I freeze, but it swivels its head. A dozen bulging eyes twitch in my direction and blink as one. Oh, that is sick. Whoa. I'm sorry, I'm just- Oh my god, are those fingers? Oh my god, that is awesome! I'm sorry, I'm gushing over the design of this thing, because holy shit does it look cool. Sorry. Back, 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 back to the task at hand. 
But still, this lets out an ear-splitting streak and runs at me. But right before it be reaches me, the beast barrels past, vanishing into the mist. Distantly, a horse screams in the dark. I need to move. Now! Oh boy, do I- oh, okay, okay, first. First choice. Do I run for the city or head towards the wagon? I can probably hide in the wagon, but that sounds... The wagon's closer, so maybe I can hide in it. I take cover beside the wagon where the air is thick and greasy smoke. Fire eats through the gaping hole, spluttering where the lantern oil mixes with brackish water. Brackish? I don't think I've ever heard of that word. Every person I see is dead or dying, except one. Oh, all mother, forgive our sins. Guide us unto your hearth. We are worthy. We are worthy. Traveler go grovels by the flames. Their hands clasp, clasp above their head in fervent prayer. Glance upwards toward the gauzy lights of Iridia. Just visible where the fog runs thinnest. I don't pray. I don't pray. The sight of the city is all the reminder I need. I came too far to die here. Rapid footsteps echo all around me. I turn in circles, frantically searching the opaque mist for, for the source. The fog fall twists and stretches sound. Suddenly, the caravan's driver bursts forth from the fog. Our eyes meet too late. He slams into me, knocking me to the ground, and slips into a patch of mud. The solace falls on him as soon as he slows. It catches the driver by his throat and rakes his stomach with razor sharp claws. It comes apart like wet paper, spilling intestines and vis viscera in the streaming tide. Fright fighting the urge to heave, I crawl frantically through the slippery muck for a handhold. Shit! Oh, we got hurt. My hand catches on the jagged edge of, edge of a rib jutting from the water. Bandages unfurl around the gouge torn deep into my palm. The pain's quickly forgotten when a hand closes around my wrist. Oh shit. Can you stand? The praying traveler leans over me. We need to run. Oh, look at our arm, though. Holy shit. I saw this in, like, the promotional but stuff. Oh. Look at that. Like, light gold coming up, cracks into our arm or something. Holy shit. I I'm sorry, I'm just- I'm gushing over the designs of everything. I reach for my hand. I didn't realize too late that my bandages have come undone. No! Don't touch me! The sensation of their thumb- Thumb brushing at the back of my hand sends a shiver down my spine. All it takes is one touch. And in the space of a, of a breath, my curse takes hold. Their lips peel back into a deranged grin. <laughs> no. I've seen this face countless times before. This is my curse. Madness of my own making. Their grip on my hand tightens until pain radiates from my, my knuckles. Let me... Suddenly their clammy hands crush my throat. Choking my off my breath. Die, 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 die! Spit bubbles at the corners of their mouth and flex, and flex my face. The edges of my vision darken as my lung lungs scream for air. Alright, let me see. My nails gouge deep into the trapper's wrist, but no matter how much blood I draw, they don't flinch. The more I struggle, the tighter the grip grows. My pulse hammers in my ears, slowing with each thudding beat. This can't be happening. I'm going to die. 
And not because of the fog ball or the solace. Because of my own curse. Tears split sting my eyes. No. No, not here. Not like this. The hands drop from my neck, leaving me wheezing for air. My lungs burn with each ragged, ragged cough. My vision clears and the traveler's face takes shape, hovering inches from mine. The lips still split in a macabre smile, but even as blood seeps between their teeth. Oh wait. I added a butt there when there wasn't a butt to begin with. <laughs> That's kind of funny. I give one last shuddering breath, then slump over, paws hooked in through their stomach. The stubble shoves the body aside, and the glowing eyes study studying its leathery skin, then... Oh. Mm -mm. Sorry, let me start over there. The soul shoves the body aside, and the glowing eyes studying, studying its leathery skin, thin as though it was- as though grinning. God damn it, I couldn't make it through that sentence. There's a flash of claws. Red sp red spill across my vision. I thought there'd be pain. But as I sink into the murky water, all I can feel is the grit of silt filling my mouth and the icy membrane of shallow water. And the icy embrace of shallow water. Why what is what am I doing? Distantly, I notice an arm resting among the outcrop of reeds. Mine. Neatly severed at the elbow. Should have taken both arms. Without them them maybe I could have survived. Maybe I could have had a home. Instead I'll die cold and alone, face down in a desolate wasteland. A fitting end for a monstrosity like me. Damn, I made bad choices. If this is death, it's not as bad as I feared. The cord is gone. As if the choking stench of as is the choking stench of bog water. I could drift forever, cocooned in oblivion, till all thought and sensation vanished. No curse. Nobody howling at me in madness and terror. Nothing at all. The thought has a terrible appeal to it. In the next moment, I take a reflexive breath. Air pours into my lungs, then out again in a ragged gasp. <sighs> Feel feeling comes flooding back. Warm cloth on my bare skin. A firm surface be beneath me. A strange tang of sulfur in the air. Do not be afraid. Whoa! Okay. Twist my head towards the voice. Tears flood my very bleary vision at the bright glow of the lamplight. Try not to move. The voice is calm, steady, and commanding. But more impor importantly, it's a stranger's voice. One thought cuts through my mental fog. I have no idea who this is, and I'm completely at their mercy. S stay away from me. My words come out in a little more than a creaky whisper. I my mouth shut, hating how weak and hopeless I sound. No. No? Who the hell is this? Let me save here. Here, I tell you what, I was so into uh, narrating that, that uh, I, I I was like slouching like unintentionally, just getting like really close to my screen. <laughs> but this this is good. I really like like that like like this so far. Let's see. Hell no, I'm sitting up. I managed to push myself on one up on one elbow. My head swims. I swam to get. Give an un an alarming lurch. Ah, a stubborn patient. 
don't have the strength to dignify that with a response. Then I pull, pull the sheet up higher and wipe the tears from my eyes until my vision clears. The stranger towers over my prone form. Warm light reflects off his pristine me medical coat. Oh my, his hair though! Look at how long his hair is! His eyes are so pretty too. Look at like all the detail, detail in like his 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 uniform here. I instinctively shrink back, and that's when I notice I'm completely naked except for the thi a thin linen sheet. Naked, lying on a low cot, and a pair of sharp golden eyes watch my every move. The man's gaze flickers from to my expo exposed unbandaged hands. Punch my hands under the sheet to try to hide them from sight. No, it's too late. He must have noticed what they look like. Strange. Cursed. Inhuman. Brace myself for his inevitable suspicion and disgust. But his exp expression doesn't even flicker from that dirty smile. He just watches in a placid silence as I struggle to make sense of my surroundings. Where am I? Who are you? Be calm, you're safe here. Whoever this is, he clearly has no idea who or what I am. I've never been safe anywhere with anyone. The only people I ever trusted betrayed me for a fat co curse of coin. I scowl, pulling the sheet protectively around myself. Where are my clothes? The man's golden eyes narrow slightly. A sharp sigh rustles. A sharp sigh rustles the papers in his hands. I see you're not dissuaded. Your clothes were torn to shreds when I found you, but I procured replacements. With a soft creak, he stands from his chair, giving me a better view of my surroundings. I seem to be in some medical clinic. Bottles of silvery alchemical concoctions line the counters in neat rows. The air makes my nose twitch. Paint with the smoke, something distinctively metallic that I can't quite, quite place. <coughs> Excuse me. The doctor produces a large, dense bundle of cloth, which he sets at the foot of my cot. He's easily a head taller than most. I, I, and I have to crane my neck to look at him. <laughs> oh man, I want to be nice, but like... Mm. I should be polite if I can, especially since I don't know who this is, what he can do, or what he wants with me. Thank you. You are welcome. I will leave you to get dressed. God, look at how long his hair is. Hey, he's got like, oh, he's got like a slight cut on his palm. Or old oh, scar, I mean. With a curt nod, he leaves through the, a narrow door. I hear the soft, a soft click as the lock turns behind him. Count to three. I count to three in the sudden silence. When I don't hear any more footsteps, I reach for the bundle of clothes. An itch on my elbow stops me short. I reach down absently to. I reach down absently to rub at it, then freeze when I, my fingers meet a neat line of stitches. I know what I saw. That beast took my arm clean off. And yet. My arm shows no, no sign of injury apart from the black stitches poking through my skin. 
gingerly flex my fingers, when my heart race at this sensation. This is impossible. I should be dead. Or at the very least, gasping out my last breaths. I squeeze my eyes shut, waiting for the pleasant dream to unravel, to wake up bleeding out in the swamp. But nothing happens. The seconds tick by. My arm remains My arm remains resolutely healed. My surroundings pristine and quiet. In numb disbelief, I reach for the replacement clothes and begin stiffly I begin stiffly putting them on. They're thicker and warmer than mine were. The black woolen cloak to go with them. There's one thing still missing. My bandages. The golden-eyed man didn't leave me with any, even though I know he saw my hands. I slide off the bed and take a few unsteady steps towards one of the drawers. This is, if this is indeed a doctor's clinic, there must be bandage, bandages somewhere. Mispronouncing words like a bitch! This is good so far, though. Start opening drawers at random, and of course, when the door swings open once more, that, and of course, that's when the door swings open once more. Are you looking for something? Whirl around, clutching the thick, a thick roll of clean bandages. I try to step back from him, but my legs bump against the edge of the cot. Your caution is understandable, though. If I meant you any harm, you would know. It doesn't make me feel that better in the slightest. But he makes no move towards me, so I quickly wind the bandages around my hands. The glowing spar scars and mottled skin disappear under a layer of clean, plain white cotton. May I ask why you need additional bandages? I clench my jaw, and it would only be a matter of time before he asked about my hands. Though the way he does... Though, though, though he way he does it is strangely roundabout. Um, I think I'll just decline the answer. Well, that's a very personal question, and I don't really want to answer. Is that so? I'm sure you realize that I can only help if you tell me what ails you. An involuntary snort of laughter escapes me. Where do I even begin? Would he even believe me if I told him? No. Best to keep my curse to myself now, and learn more about him first. Who are you? You may call me Caress. And where exactly am I? Iridia, which I assume was your caravan destination. Can't think of nowhere else for a group of travelers to go. Oh, listen to that. Listen to that harp. Ooh. Sorry. I had to pause to appreciate the music. Radia. So I made it to the City of Knowledge after all. I should feel relieved, but... All I can manage is a vague sense of increasing unease. How did I end up here? I brought you to my clinic, of course. You were the only survivor from the caravan. Barely clinging to life. You needed immediate treatment. Which you provided. Yes. He says it so simply, as if I'm a small child and he's explaining di basic addition to me. I frown and flex my fingers on my recently healed arm. Aside from being a bit stiff, it feels fine. They're really attached to me. And you're saying that you stitched my arm back on? Pardon? So let's attack the caravan. It ripped everyone to shreds. It tore my my arm clean off. But when I woke up here, trail off, be real, bewildered. I've never heard of any magic that could heal a mortal wound like that. If 
What kind of person could do such a thing? The doctor. Caress. And choose the bridge of his nose. He sits back down in his chair, quiet for a long time. I do not know where you came from, but it really is a city of knowledge and deadly secrets alike. Information is power, and it is most unwise to give, give or receive it freely. Since you have refused to divulge your secrets, I will not divulge mine. I do not even know your name. I was just... You are new to Iridia, so I will overlook this specific breach of edit etiquette. However, you should not expect others to ex extend the same courtesy. Do you understand? He looks pointedly at me, at my freshly bandaged hands. Loath though I am to admit it, he has a point. I'm a complete stranger to him, and if he's telling the truth, he saved my life. I take a deep, ste steadying breath. This time, when I speak, I sound a bit more- Sorry. I take a deep, steadying breath. This time, when I speak, I sound a bit more like myself. Kiro. My name is Kuro. It is a pleasure to meet you, Kuro. There is there is a little more warmth warmth in his smile. His polite demeanor back in a, in an instant. Thank you for saving my life. A chance to smile in return. Even if he won't explain how he did the impossible. There's no doubt in my mind that I'd be dead if, if not for Kuras. Think nothing, nothing of it. Not sure if he's just being excessively courteous. Courteous, but his words only raise a more urgent questions. But I have to ask, why did you save me? You don't know me. Questions seem to startle Kuras. I could hardly, I could hardly leave you to die in the waste. Assisting those in need is the very essence of a doctor's duty. I've never met a doctor who handed out free, free clothes. Your fingers find the edges of the cloak. There's a subtle but delicately embroidered, pa embroidered pattern at the hem. Try not to think of what kind of price Kuras might have. Ask for such well-made clothes. No, I suppose not. Forgive my presumptions. I really come across so fascinating, so fascinating a patient. Oh, okay. A blink. What did he just say? Yeah, it simply meant that few would cling to life so resolutely. Or brave such a perilous journey to Iridia. I could not help. I could not help but being curious about you, Kiro. His voice dips into a soft murmur, and he abruptly looks away from me. Oh man, I feel like this one's kind of flirting with him. <laughs> See, which one do I want to pick? I'm really liking the story so far. It's really, it's really neat. Not neat, like, really interesting. Kira seems like an interesting guy. I honestly don't know what to say to that. If you knew more about me, you might not like me as much as you think. Doctor or not, he wouldn't want to risk his life or sanity over me. No one ever does. Pe a peculiar thing to say. Why would I why would I have cause to dislike you? And here we are, back on my curse. The thing I've been desperate to avoid discussing. A loud knock at the front door stops our conversation co cold and spares me from having to say anything else. Duty calls. Fortunately, you're not my only patient today. 
The knocking grew, grew, grows more insistent. Kiris lets out a tired sigh. Please, please, wait your turn. Though he says it quietly, clamor on the other side of the door abruptly stops. Do you need anything else before you leave, Kuro? Oh. Between the soulless attack and my miraculous survival, I had almost forgotten why I came to Iridia in the first place. I need directions to the Cenobium. The Cenobium? Oh dear. Oh shit. No. What? The look on his face is downright chilling. He pauses, choosing his words with cold deliber deliberation when he speaks again. Whatever you seek, it is very unlikely that you will find it there. The Cenobian's ga gates are open for a precious few visitors. Even if they did, you would not like what you find inside. My heart sinks. Is he saying that I came all this way for nothing? Risk life and limb for nothing? No, it can't be. I've only just arrived, and Iridia is the largest city still standing. There has to be a cure for me here. Then, if not the Cenobium, where would you suggest? Do you know anyone else in Iridia? I shake my head. Then I suggest a local guide. Head, head to the wet, head to the wet wick, and ask for Leander. Excuse me. The wet what? The wet wick. He sounds deeply unamused. Follow the postings advertising Le Leander's bloodhounds. They are difficult to miss. When you meet Leander, tell my Leander, 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 and tell him I sent you. Not sure if I'm pronouncing his name right. I'm very sorry for not. That isn't much to go on, but Kiras points towards the clinic's back door. You will be safe so long as you do not draw attention to yourself. That's easier said than done. I've always been a magnet for the worst of the attention. If you if you require my assistance, you may return whenever you wish. Oh, look at the smile. Though he's smiling, there's a note of finality in his voice. Resigned to my dismissal, I slip out the back door. Alright, let me just save here. <sighs> starting to feel like I'm starting to feel a little tired from all the talking and I'm only like thirty eight minutes in. Um, I can keep going for a little longer, I think. I found myself standing in a narrow Sorry. I find myself standing in a narrow and rather gloomy alley. I pull the new cloak up over my nose, stepping out of, stepping over the contents of chamber, chamber pots that have been empty, emptied into the streets. Something weighs heavily inside the cloak's pockets. My coin purse. Everything is still inside. Every last coin that I'd scraped together for the journey to Iridia. It doesn't even look like it was open. There were so few coins to begin with, they probably weren't worth stealing. I glance back at the clinic's closed door. Kiras didn't take any payment. He didn't even ask for a future favor. But he also said that in Iridia, secrets are power. Did he expect me to give up mine at some point? Not exactly comforting. That's not exactly a comforting thought. Still, no matter why he did it, Kiras gave me a second chance and the lead on where I might find help. Better get going before he changes his mind. I squeeze out of the alley and into the crowded main street. The line outside Kiras' clinic stretches down the road already. Two thin peddlers queue alongside weathered elders. If any place is in desperate need of a free clinic, this one. Cobblestone or stones are treacherously rough, rough under my feet. 
deep grooves worn between them by regular flooding and decades of hug use. I knew Iridia was a river city, but I didn't expect it to look so eroded. Buildings are, are tired and dilapidated, all crammed together in narrow streets. A child darts by, clutching something greasy. Grease. Mm. A child darts by, clutching something greasy wrapped in paper. The smell of fried food drifts over, over to me. My stomach gives a faint gurgle. This morning's catch! Fried up hot and fresh! Not too many eyeballs today! Sounds disgusting, but I'm starving, so I duck my head under the stall's grubby awning. A large fish leers up at me, its free three bulging eyes still visible through the thick layer of crispy batter. The vendor gives me a tap, a gap to its grin. What's the cheapest thing you've got? The vendor points at a metal basket of what looks like long strips of savory fried dough. Fresh long lads! Three copper apiece. Don't burn your mouth. I take the coins out, counting them gingery. This rate, I might not even be able to afford dinner. Reluct reluctantly, I drop the payment on the counter and take my meal. Two streets later, I pass under a wrought iron archway adorned with dangling garlands of red and pink lilies. The buildings on in this quarter are dismally rough. Are a dizzying riot of color, painted walls, and tinted, tinted glass everywhere I look. Damn, this is this looks like such a big change from where we were before. Sheer red and pink curtains flutter in open doorways. Musical voices call out invitingly. Incense mingles with the pungent scents of flowers barely covering the salt and musk of warm bodies. This must be Iridia's entertainment district. I'm polishing off my food and dusting off the crumbs from my hands when I spot a poster. It features a silhouette of a smiling man wearing a single dagger-like earring and the word bloodhound printed over his head. A model, as above, so below, circles the artwork. Leander is the leader of the Bloodhounds, then the face printed on the poster is likely his. Follow the line of identical posters around, around the corner and nearly hit my head on a precariously dangling wooden sign. Looking up, looking up, faded orange letters re read the wet wick. Oh nice, we found it! Save right here. Now it's been like 40, 40 minutes. I think I'm gonna end it here, but I will be back on this. Sorry, I'm sorry. I can't really talk for like really long periods of time. And I've done like so much narrating. Um, I believe the Kickstarter page mentioned that uh, once they reach a certain goal they'll put in like voice acting <laughs> but so far I really like this game I like the game I'm gonna be I'm gonna be playing more of the demo soon so thank you so much for watching like comment and subscribe if you want to and I'll see you next time <laughs>